I'm Carol Ammon, former CEO and founder of Endo Pharmaceuticals. So the quest for the $100 million is an interesting story in of itself. Uh, we uh, first said, okay, how are we going to get some contacts here? How are we going to go and get the $100 million? And Lou knew somebody who knew somebody, and we ended up at uh, uh, a small venture group. And we sat and told the story about Percocet and what we wanted to do with it. And the gentleman kept smiling, and I thought, oh, great, he loves the story. And at the end of the story, he said, that's a great story. I said, good, because I need to go back with a little letter there that says you're willing to commit $100 million. And he very, in a good natured way, laughed. And he said, look, he said, I, I got to tell you how it works. And I love the story, but there may be another story that comes along tomorrow. And I can't guarantee I'll be there with the $100 million. And so we were kind of crestfallen and we laughed and we had to put our heads together. And then somebody knew somebody at Smith Barney and we went to meet with them. And they got very excited about the story. As we're telling the story, they're on the phone and they're calling more and more people in, which we took as a very good sign. And so they, at the end of the day, said they'd love to take, take this on on a contingency basis. So if no deal happened, we didn't owe them the millions of dollars that we didn't have. <laughs> And uh, if it did work, they'd get a percentage of the deal. So they set us up with seven different equity players. And this was a couple of weeks later, helped us shape the story. And meanwhile, I had uh, decided that it would be a good idea to take a couple of days off and go to a dude ranch with some friends. And of course, the horse they gave me was much too slow. So the next day I went back and told them what a, what a talented equestrian I was and that I needed a very fast horse. And so, of course, I had no experience riding horses. And that horse knew it, threw me on some rocks, and then I broke uh, two, bi two big ribs at the bottom. And I, I, oh gosh, I was in agony. But we had to go on the road show. And at the same time, I started to get sick. Ultimately, I ended up with pneumonia. But we spent the first day going to three of the big uh, ec private equity players. And we spent time talking with them and uh, lots of nods and smiles. And we felt that we had some good uh, possibilities out of that group. And the next day, we went to another meeting, sets of, set of meetings with sets of suits around the room, same thing, everybody asking questions and smiles. And the bankers would tell us that they had a lot of interest. And the idea was that we'd get a front runner and we'd keep one in the warming drawer in case one fell out. And we'd feel very good about that. So that night, I'm, I'm in agony at that point. I can hardly walk. Every time I breathe, I'm feeling these broken ribs. And I'm coughing like crazy because I've got pneumonia. And we're walking down the street. And the plan was that the next morning we would see Kelso. And I turned to Lou and I said, I have to go home. We've got a lot of interest out of those six people. I think that's plenty. So, you know, let's go home. He said, I, that's fine. I agree. We'll go home. And I immediately felt better. He said, but let's just stop. Let's have a drink. So we went into the bar and I had a scotch and I don't remember what Lou had. And he started to feel a little bit better. And Lou said, let's have another drink. So we had another drink and well, I was feeling pretty good by that second drink. So I said, you know, I think I can make it tomorrow. I think it'll be okay. So we go to the hotel and I get settled into the room and of course the scotch wore off and I was sitting up all night with a pillow holding my ribs together every time I coughed. But we did go to Kelso and, and what serendipity. It was just the best thing because we met with Kelso and it, it was just they understood immediately what we were trying to do. They were so excited about it. We, we didn't get any type of excitement out of the other people. They were excited about it, but they were afraid to show it. Maybe they felt it would hurt their negotiating position or something. But, uh, you know, I got home that night and um, the next morning I had a FedEx from Kelso and I had the papers for a deal and we finished negotiating it that night and we were off and running with Kelso. And, and I always just thanked my lucky stars that, that we made that stop at Kelso the next day because they were so aligned with what we were trying to do. And we knew that we would have a successful partner in Kelso and they turned out to be just amazing. The advice I give is really that uh, it goes back to the, the belief in what you're trying to do. And if you don't wholeheartedly believe 
in what you're trying to do, then you need to step back and really evaluate whether or not it's the right time or the right thing to be doing. But I also talk to them about making certain that they surround themselves with the right people, not the people that want to just keep telling them what a great person they are, but the people that really understand it would be at the retail sector, be it the R and D environment, be it the IT environment, whatever those things are that are essential to getting your business off the ground, make sure you've got the best people with the best competencies involved. And I think one is don't let age, uh, be a factor in not speaking up. I think a lot of people are fearful that they need more experience before they can ask the questions or jump into the conversation. And, and experience should be your, or not necessarily experience, but talent and smarts should rule the day.